guess what, everyone? Welcome to the Kelly Kitchen. I clap with a spoon in my hand. Mm, so happy you guys are here. I am super excited. I have got some really great recipes. Um, these lemon drop cookies are like my keto lemon heaven. And we're going to make some cheddar muffins. They're low-carb cheddar muffins. Um, and they're a variation on my jalapeno cheddar muffins. But we're adding a little bit of red pepper and a little bit of green bell pepper. And we are going to make a, a very easy vegetable beef soup. And I may have already made it for you guys before. Um, but we're going to make it again. And... If I did already make it for you, let's be honest. You guys are really only here for the lemon, the lemon drop cookies. So, um, anyways, I'm so happy you came for some food, health, and fun. Um, it's been a crazy day. I went to work all day, just like you guys, and I'm home now, cooking for my family. And we are going to um, do some batch cooking. So we're gonna get started with our cheddar muffins, and they're low carb. Hi, everyone. Hi, Julie. Hi, Atsuko. Boreen. Flaherty, I love seeing you. Thanks for joining. Um, we're going to get started with our cheddar uh, muffins. And I kind of already got a little started. So um, in my bowl, I've got some almond flour and some coconut flour. And I just like to um, whisk it around or kind of move it around a little bit because it tends to be a little bit lumpy. And so I just kind of move the, the coconut flour and the almond flour together the recipes all of my recipes i was super organized all of my recipes are on my website so you can search for them there but i'm going to talk through it all right now um so in this bowl i've got two cups of almond flour i've got a quarter of a cup of coconut flour how rude of me when well, my drawers are open um coconut flour is in there i'm going to add in here i have my um, my baking powder, my salt, and my garlic powder. So I'm just gonna pop those in there. Again, we're just gonna mix those. Make sure you don't have any lumps of the baking powder or baking soda because that leaves sort of a, a, a metal taste. I don't know, just sort of like a tangy taste in my mouth when I have that. Okay, so I've got all my dry ingredients mixed in there. Um, this is really kind of like a dump um, type of, recipe because I just dump it all in the bowl and I don't even really think much of it. So I have, um, I don't know if you can see this, I've already chopped, let's just get a close up. So I already chopped some red bell pepper and some green bell pepper and um, if you want to do only red or only green, that is totally fine. Um, we're going to put that, that's about a half a cup each. Um, if you want to omit them, you can do that too. I have a cup of shredded cheddar, nothing special, just shredded cheddar cheese. Um, then I'm going to add, um, I have six tablespoons of melted butter, just regular butter. Put that on in. And then we're gonna put three quarters of a cup of heavy whipping cream. Um, this also calls for a little bit of water at the at the end of mixing this all together because it tends to get a little bit dry but that's okay because we want to have sort of dense um almost sort of like biscuit muffins okay so there's our cream i'm just gonna grab a half a cup of water here i don't know if i'm gonna use it i'm gonna now crack in i got four eggs and eggs um, do a good job of rising these muffins also. These are, you know, because we're not using regular flour um, and regular, you know, stuff like that, um, we have to get a little creative. So we're adding four eggs. And I wanted to mention, my girlfriend, she's lost like 45 pounds. Um, I was helping her with keto. And in the beginning of, I think it was like September, she would text me and she was like, are you sure this is going to work? I don't believe you. I'm eating all this fat. And she's lost, like, oh, I think 40 to 45 pounds. She texted me this morning. She said, I hit my goal weight. It's very exciting. But she eats these muffins for breakfast because I think a lot of people struggle um, 
with choices for breakfast because they don't want to eat bacon and eggs anymore. They want to break from that. And so she makes a batch of the jalapeno cheddar muffins and basically puts them in the freezer. And then she um, pulls them out in the morning and just lets it thaw. And then she might toast it or she might add a little bit of, um, uh, she might microwave it for just a little bit. So um, our, our muffin mix, let me just show you guys. It's pretty chunky and that's gonna be great. Um, hi, honey, my honey is watching. Um, and again, this recipe calls for water, but just to thin it a little bit and it, you never really know how big your eggs are gonna be. So I actually ended up having very large eggs. So my, my muffin batter, I think it is, is a good thickness and I don't need to add any water. So just keep that in mind when you are making this is that you don't always have to add the water. So we're gonna put that to the side. I already have my muffin tin all ready to go. This is my little trick. This is how my easy way of just an ice cream scooper, just to get my, my muffin mix into the, um, the pan, super easy. And we won't eat all of these today for dinner tonight with our meal. And we'll probably just have a little of a bit of them, um, maybe one each for lunch tomorrow. Look at how easy this is, you guys. I'm just gonna scoop those right in to each one of those. And then, so we'll have it for breakfast and lunch tomorrow. I'm sorry, dinner tonight and lunch tomorrow. And then I will probably freeze the rest. I might give some away, but I'll freeze the rest. And these are, you know, like when you're in a pinch and you wanna grab something, you know, some soup from the freezer, you'll already have these muffins in the freezer as well. So. Keep that in mind. This is a great batch cook thing. Um, I forgot to tell you guys. Well, I mentioned it to you guys last time. I um, was a guest speaker on um, the Qu Quit Sugar Summit. And I'm very excited about it. it the Quit Sugar Summit is um, going to be live March 2nd to March 8th. And it is a free seminar online and I'm one of the panelists very exciting um so there'll be more coming on that but it's a great uh uh way to learn more about low carb cooking and um hear from a lot of the scientific experts um I'm sort of one of the fun experts because when you hear all the science of these things then you're like yeah that makes sense and then get home and you're like, um, what am I supposed to eat? So I, that's why you come to me because I, I help you learn how to, to eat a little bit better. Okay. So we've got some pretty full muffins. These don't rise like normal muffins. So keep that in mind. Hi, Lisa, Laura. Hey, Laura, congratulations. I saw your son or one of your children got into college. Very exciting. Congratulations. We're still waiting here. Um, so I've got my muffins here. I am going to just sprinkle, um, the batter calls for a cup of cheese. I'm going to use the other half, um, of a cup, um, and just sprinkle the top of these muffins. I've got my oven going at 350 degrees. The recipe calls for 325 for 30 minutes, but because we're on a short timeline here, I crank up the oven a little bit, so we're going to put these in because I'm also going to be baking the lemon drop cookies at the same time or right, you know, towards the end of this. And I don't want to, um, the lemon drop cookies call for a 350 um, uh, temperature. So I got my cheese on top of my muffins. I'm just going to give you guys a quick show of what this looks like. They're super pretty. Um, so this is, and I'll come and see who comes to, came to say hi to me. Oh, hi, Marissa and Donna from Wyoming. Thanks for watching. Okay, so I've got our cheddar muffins that have a little bit of red and green pepper. 
um, made with almond flour. And these are about three net carbs per muffin. I'm going to pop these into the oven. Like I said, the normal recipe calls for 325 for 30 minutes, but I'm going to put these in for 30 minutes. And in about 20 minutes, I'm going to check on them. We're on a timeline here, you guys. we got to get dinner on the table, and we're just going to make it make it work. So those are going in, looking nice and pretty. Um, I have to confess, I had a major flop yesterday. I am practicing on vanilla cupcakes. Hi, Emma, from Australia. Oh my gosh, people are watching from all over the world. Hi, Emily, thanks for coming. Um, so I had a massive flop yesterday. Um, while I'm telling you about my flop, I'm gonna get our soup going. I'm gonna turn this just a tad so you can see that. And that you can already see. We don't wanna have any cameras falling on us like we did last time. Um, so I had a massive flop last week and, um, or la this weekend I'm trying to make, um, let me just move this this way. Um, I'm trying to make vanilla cupcakes and um, made them with my goddaughter, and she was so excited because she was gonna get to um, she was gonna get to frost our cupcakes, and they were a flop. So I told her I'd go back to the drawing board and we would figure out a new um, cupcake recipe, a keto low carb cupcake recipe that actually tastes good. So I'm working on it. We're going to have something fun, fun coming your way. In my pot, can you all see this? Yes. In my pot, oh, from British Columbia. Nice to see you, Dorothy. Thanks for coming. Oh, in Oklahoma and Michigan. You guys, this is awesome. Thanks for joining me. We're going to get started on our vegetable beef soup. I love, oh, and another Canadian. I love Canadians. You guys, my boyfriend's a Canadian, and he's the best. This whole family is amazing. Um, the reason I love this vegetable beef soup is because, again, it's one of those dump type of dinners. Um, I did some pre-chopping. I'm going to just show you what I got here. I did some pre-chopping just to, you know, get things going here. I've got a, um, my large stock pot with um, a couple of tablespoons of olive oil in the bottom. This is a heavy bottom. Just use any stock pot you have. Get it going nice and hot. I've got um, about, uh, this is like one large onion. This is four small to medium zucchini. And then this is just one of those packages of already sliced mushrooms. And we're going to just dump all this all in all at the same time. And so we'll get that going. Um, but the other thing that I love about this soup is that most, I mean, I love beef stew type soups, but um, I don't want to be stewing the meat um, for hours and hours and hours. I mean, I got to get dinner on the table. So I use ground beef for this soup. And um, I actually, I don't even brown the ground beef. I add it right in with the broth, with the, the, the beef broth and the canned tomatoes because it gives it like this really soft, velvety texture. It gives the beef the like really cool velvety texture. It doesn't make it chunky. It sort of, it melds in with the soup. So it's kind of cool. Um, I also being super lazy tonight and I'm just using, um, the jarred mashed, uh, what is this? Garlic, sorry. <laughs> Listen, I worked all day too, so I've got a little bit of brain freeze. So this is my mashed garlic. That's about two garlic cloves. I'm gonna just pop that in there. We'll give this a nice stir. In a second here, after the um, vegetables really start to um, weep and cook down a little bit, we're gonna add in our beef stock. I've got two cups. I don't want to drop it. You guys, stay tuned. Keep keep tuning in every week because I drop stuff all the time and it's um, quite comical. Last week I dropped the cameras. Isn't that fun? So um, I've got two cups of beef stock. And here's the thing. Um, you can buy Kettle and Fire bone broth. It's 
absolutely amazing, great quality. You can make your own. You got time for that? Have at it. Um, you can buy canned stock, that's fine. I like to use Better Than Bullion, and it's just a beef or chicken or vegetable base. This happens to be the beef base. And we're gonna add two cups of um, the bone broth, the, the beef broth, which I made from the Better Than Bullion. I just add water to it. So it's one teaspoon of the Better Than Bullion along with um, one cup of water equals one cup of stock. So my vegetables, God, my kitchen smells amazing. What you guys don't know, I don't know if you heard, you probably didn't, but my daughter Piper popped in while we were getting started and she said, wow, the kitchen smells so good. Uh, I don't think you guys heard that, but um, she is, uh, you know, she, whatever, she just popped in. She never wants to be in front of the camera, but maybe I can entice her. So, hi Kelly from Nevada and Texas and Ohio. You guys, this, I, I'm so honored that you guys came to watch me. It's, so it's fun and I love it and I hope that you guys keep coming. If you have any suggestions or anything that you want to ask or learn about, please let me know. If I don't catch you on the live show, I will answer questions after. I'm kind of, things get a little chaotic sometimes, so um, I don't always get to all the questions, but please feel free to ask them. If you have any suggestions, then let me know. Our vegetables are really cooking down nicely. If you're just tuning in now, I have mushrooms onions and um, zucchini with just a little bit of olive oil and some garlic. And we're just making those so that they're nice and soft. Now, at the same time, I am going to, I have, this is my grass fed beef. Um, and this is the 85% lean, 15 15% fat. Um, you can get the other one if you want. I just happen to like more fat in my stuff, in my meals, in my food. Um, I don't count macros, but I'm always aware, I'm always conscious of it. Um, I got a little beef on my hands, I gotta clean that up. Let me just get, I'm just gonna give a quick look at my um, cheddar muffins. Let's check this out. They. They're looking good, you guys. They're looking really good. So those are coming together. Um, let me, we're going to just press this meat down. Again, we're not trying to brown the meat. We're just trying to break it up because in a second here, I'm going to add our tomatoes um, and our broth and our base and our seasonings. And the meat will naturally break up in the soup. So I have got just a simple old can of diced tomatoes. This is 28 ounces of diced tomatoes in its juice. I'm gonna pour that right on top. There we go. Um, I have got oregano. I've got one teaspoon of oregano and I've got one teaspoon of salt. So I'm gonna just sprinkle those on there. I feel like I'm on a cooking show. I got it all planned and organized. Isn't this fun? Um, now I'm gonna add my stock. And again, after I get this all in here, I am going to, um, I have some of the stock left in the bottom. I don't, that's my flavor gold. I don't wanna lose that. Um, and then, so you're gonna do two cups of beef broth and then you're gonna add one more teaspoon of the beef base. And again, it's just better than bouillon. Just, I just love this stuff. So um, it just gives it a nice flavor. So what happens is, is that our beef is going to, um, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna cook in the broth. It's not gonna cook in the oil and in the pan. So it'll be much softer texture. Um, and we're gonna, we're gonna, that's on high. We're gonna break this up. We'll turn it around a little bit. And as soon as I get the beef nice and sort of broken up and mixed in with all the vegetables, then I'm gonna, it's gonna come to a boil and I'm gonna put the lid on and I'm gonna leave it on a high simmer 
not a boil, but a high simmer um, for like 20 minutes. And then our soup is done. Isn't that exciting? Okay, so I think we're good. I think we're good on that. And that looks great. Okay, put that to the side. We're just gonna put the lid right on there. That is gonna be happy for the next 15, 20 minutes. How are we doing on time, you guys? <gasps> we've only been cooking for like 16 minutes and we've only we've already got two things done. You guys, keto cooking, not too hard, I promise. Okay, now the star of the show. I know everybody's been waiting for my lemon drop cookies. I have to tell you, I, I'm so in love with these that I really am in like lemon nirvana. It's amazing. Um, okay, and again, I was trying to be super organized, so I'm gonna just, yes, all the recipes are on the website. They're, go to the website, thekellykitchen.com, Kelly with an I-E, thekellykitchen.com, and all these recipes, I was super organized. The, all three of these recipes are on the website, the lemon drop cookies, the cheddar muffins and the vegetable beef soup and the carb counts are there and I'm so proud of myself, you have no idea. Um, okay, so here we go. Oh my God, I hope I don't drop this. Ah, I was super organized, you guys, and I pulled myself together and we're gonna make our lemon drop cookies. And I have a little surprise for you because the way that the lemon drop cookies, um, the best way is to make them and then to freeze them for like at least 30 minutes because we're going to make slice and bake. And because we have a very short time frame tonight, I have a little surprise for you. But let me get started here. So in my bowl, I have just my regular almond flour. Um, and again, do you see how I've, I like to just take my spoon and break up any lumps? You can put this through a sifter too, um, but almond flour tends to be a little stickier. But um, okay, so I've got my almond flour. I'm gonna add two, tea, two tablespoons of coconut flour and one teaspoon of baking powder, or baking soda, sorry. Get that out of the way. And then I'm using um, my, my favorite sweeteners. Oh, hello from Minnesota. I love Minnesota. Nice to see you, Tracy. Oh, hi, Tracy. Um, okay, so I've got Lakanto monk fruit sweetener. Again, it's a blend. It, Lakanto is a brand. It's a brand name, and I don't have the bag on me. I usually do, but I don't have the bag on me. But there are many brands of, of sweeteners out on the market. There's Nourish, there's Swerve, there's Lakanto, there's so many different brands. So this brand is Lakanto monk fruit sweetener, but it's a misnomer because it's a mix of monk fruit and erythritol. And um, erythritol is where you get the, the, the sugar-like texture, the granular sugar-like texture, and the monk fruit is like an extract. Think of like vanilla extract where you just have like a little tiny bit because monk fruit is super, super, like 100 times sweeter, thousands of times sweeter. Somebody, uh, you know, fact check me on that. But so this is a blend so that you, um, you don't get the cooling effect of only the, the, the erythritol, but you have the sweetness from the monk fruit and it comes granular and it's, I use it almost exclusively, but that's, we're gonna use this. This is, um, I think this is a third of a cup, is it? Yes, this is a third of a cup of the monk fruit sweetener. You do not need to powder it um, at all. Sometimes you do need to powder, but for, for these muffins in the cookies, I'm sorry, these cookies, you do not need to powder it. But again, I wanna make sure I got all my lumps out. This is just my dry ingredients. Get all my lumps out. And I had a little lemon fest. Somebody dropped off bags and bags of Meyer lemons. So I have so much lemon juice and I squeezed all my lemons and I'm um, very happy about it. So I've been making lots of lemon stuff. First, I'm gonna add the butter. This is a no egg 
recipe, by the way, if you're trying to avoid eggs or you can't have eggs, this is a no egg recipe, which is kind of unique for me because I eat lots of eggs. So this is a quarter of a cup of melted butter. I'm just gonna get that in there. Um, we're gonna do a quarter of a cup of fresh lemon juice. We're gonna do um, one teaspoon of lemon extract. Lemon extract. You can find these in any supermarket or you can go online to um, uh, amazon.com. They have it there. Um, I spilled a little bit of lemon juice on my thing, so I just want to clean that off there. Okay, that is probably good. Okay, let's get that nice and mixed up together. This will form into a really nice dough. Before I completely mix it together, I am going to zest in, ooh, I need a new lemon. Here we go. I'm gonna zest. I love this microplane zester. It makes it so that the um, the zest is almost like feather, feather. Let's see. Oh, Tennessee campfire stew. Oh, when you were a Girl Scout leader, I was a Girl Scout leader too. I never heard of that. Well, that's what we're making tonight. So we're, we'll call this campfire stew. I love that. Um, I'm gonna put. So the recipe calls for a um, a teaspoon of lemon zest, but. I'm just gonna zest to my heart's content. I'll probably do the whole thing, um, and it gives it like a like these feather um, zest pieces. Um, I have this other zester that almost makes you feel like you're chewing on lemon rind, and that is uh, it, it can, tends to be a little bit bitter. So we'll just do, and I'm gonna show you this lemon zest because it's just so pretty, and. Um, I think that's a, the recipe calls for a teaspoon of lemon zest. Um, let's get that all in there. I, I hope you can see this. I don't know if you can see this. Let's see if you can see. Can you see the zest? It's so pretty, bright and yellow. I love that. Um, so let me just bring this together into a ball of dough. And here's the thing. When you get this dough made, we need to freeze it. I think we should freeze it for about half an hour to really get like your best texture. Oh, look at our soup. Can you guys see? Let me just turn this this way so you can see. See the soup? Doesn't that look amazing? Oh. When all these flavors come together and the vegetables get nice and soft, and this is even better the next day. Um, we've actually eaten this a lot in the last couple of weeks, so we're going to have it for dinner tonight, but then I'm going to freeze the rest of it so that uh, my family doesn't get sick of it. Um, and all of my meat is nicely... Uh, cooking all throughout the entire soup. Okay, so let me just show you something. I have a piece of saran wrap. I'm sure you guys know how to do this. I asked some kids this weekend, like when we were talking about this recipe, I said, you know, like slice and bake. They didn't know what slice and bake was. I was shocked. How could they, I mean, I'm actually kind of glad that they don't know what slice and bake is, but Yes, Carol, you're right. There is never too much thing as too much lemon zest. I concur. The, re the website for all the recipes is called thekellykitchen.com. The Kelly with an IE, kitchen.com. And all my social is The Kelly Kitchen, whether it's YouTube or, um, or Facebook or Instagram. Um, I do my best to get all of my recipes up quickly. Um, but I'm just one person, so I don't always get things up too quickly, but I, I try. Um, okay, so I just wanted to show you guys. Do you see how my dough is kind of in crumbles here? I'm going to form it into a log. Form this into a log. And then I'm going to take my 
saran wrap and roll it like sushi. And there is our slice and bake roll. So we're gonna freeze this for 30 minutes. And surprise, surprise, because this is um, TV magic, I already made one. <laughs> Done. So I made this about an hour ago. It's nice and firm. I let me just get this stuff out of the way. Um, our cheddar, actually, our cheddar muffins are almost done. Oh, right. There's the buzzer. Let's check on the the doneness. Oh, oh my God! I'm so excited. The cheddar muffins look amazing. This is amazing. I mean, every day in this kitchen, it's like Christmas. I just love it. I get to. People think I'm crazy, but I'm not. It's just good food. Okay, these have been in here for 20 minutes. The muffins have been in for 20 minutes at 350. I'm going to give them another, like, five to seven minutes, five minutes, and, um, and then I'm going to take them out. Wait. I'm going to turn that down a little bit. I'm, it's getting a little hot in here. Um, okay, so the... The muffins, we'll put those for another, let's say another five minutes, and I'm going to get our um, our cookies going, our little slice and bake experiment. Do not be afraid of this, of all these dishes. This, I should probably leave the camera rolling when I'm all done, because these dishes take me about seven minutes to do. Do not be afraid of the dishes. I collect everything here and then I very, very, very quickly do all the dishes. Actually, thanks to my boyfriend who does most of the dishes and I love him for it. Um, but I do all the cooking and he helps and does much of the cleaning up. So it's very exciting. Um, and it works. It works. I think that everybody needs to participate. My daughter puts away all the groceries and she empties the dishwasher. And um, so I don't feel like I have to do everything. Everybody helps. My cookies, which I put back in the freezer. Here's my log of cookies. This should make about 12 cookies, maybe a little bit more if you do them a little thinner. Other times you can use a little mini um, ice cream scooper or take a little ball of dough and roll it and then smash it and then cook it that way if that's how you wanna bake these. Um, but I, I actually like the way that these cookies look when they are sliced this way. So we are going to do, I'm going to see, I think this will probably give me 12. The recipe says it gives me 12, but it depends on how thick you slice them. Um, and we're going to put these out and we're going to bake these for about 10 minutes. They go really fast. So there you go. There's our cookies. They're really pretty. And we're gonna put those, they do not spread. So, I mean, I wouldn't put them too close together, but um, you don't have to worry about them spreading like other cookies. Um, so we're just gonna get those on our sheet. How many did I get here? Three, six, nine. I think I got more than 12. 10, 11, 12. I got 14. That's pretty cool. That means less carbs <laughs> because the recipe calls the recipe calls this out as 12 um, cookies. And if I'm making 14, that means we divide the recipe by 14 instead of 12. But who's counting? Um, okay, so here are my cookies. They're beauteous. We're gonna put these in the oven for 10 minutes. And our, our cheddar muffins are almost done. One of the other things that um, I can't make happen in TV Magic is we're gonna make the lemon glaze for our cookies. But here's the thing, our lemon glaze, see how beautiful our soup is? 
our lemon glaze, our lemon glaze can't go on the cookies until the cookies are fully um, and completely cooled, and they're just not going to be cooled in the time that that we are visiting with each other tonight. So um, we'll just uh, I'm just going to make the cookies for you. I'm sorry, I'm just going to make the glaze for you so you can see that, and then I'll show you what the finished product looks like. Super cool. Okay, our soup is coming together really nicely. It's not done yet because I'm waiting for the zucchini to get even a little bit softer, and it'll get softer and softer as you as you let this sort of cook together. And oh, is that Nina? Hi, Nina. I haven't seen you in a bazillion years. Nina and I went to high school together. Hi. Um. Okay, so I'm gonna make the um. This is the frosting, the glaze for our lemon cookies. Um, I told you guys that I had a lot of lemon juice. I squeezed lemons yesterday, and this is all pure Meyer lemon juice. This is like liquid gold. It's very exciting. Um, let me get my let me get my fork. And I am going to, so in my bowl here, I have a teaspoon of melted coconut oil. I've had this jar forever. I hardly ever use it, but it's nice to keep it. I keep it in my, my cupboard. Um, it stays solidified until like summertime and then it might um, liquefy a little bit, but I just have a, just a teaspoon of it. And if and you don't even actually taste the coconut flavor at all, but you're just gonna melt that in the um, the microwave. And then we're going to do this is my powdered monk fruit sweetener. So this is just like I was telling you with the Lakanto monk fruit sweetener that was granular. This is the same thing except for it has been powdered. You can buy both separately. You can buy the granular and you can buy the powdered. Or if you just want to buy the granular, then you can use a coffee grinder. I know it seems weird, but you can take your granular sweetener and put it in a coffee grinder and it makes it powdered. And the reason that you do that, the reason that you powder sometimes is because sugar alcohols after you, oh, Wait, let me get this and then I'll finish that thought. Hold on, those are our muffins. And I just can't even contain myself because these are so pretty. And oh, we are going to have a feast tonight. Oh God, I hope I don't drop this. Look at our cheddar muffins. Aren't those gorgeous? Mm, they smell so amazing. And I'm just going to let them sit off to the side here. I'll probably take some pictures of them later. You know, make sure that I've got a good picture on the blog. But the, this recipe is on the blog. They're called Keto Cheddar Muffins, right? I think Keto Cheddar Muffins. Just type in Cheddar Muffins and you'll find it. So those are Cheddar Muffins. I'm going to just put those off to the side here. Let's finish up. I forgot what I was saying. What was I telling you? Oh, I was telling you. I was telling you about sugar alcohols. So sometimes sugar alcohols, after they cool, they recrystallize. And so, like if I'm making a cheesecake and I bake it and then it recrystallizes, then it the when I take a bite of it, it tastes a little crunchy. If you guys ever noticed that, like your sugar alcohols will get a little crunchy. It won't, it kind of have the texture of sand. It doesn't taste like sand, but I don't mind it. But if you don't want that, then just powder it in your coffee grinder or you can buy it pre-powdered. So I have my coconut um, oil and I'm gonna do um, a quarter of a cup of this powdered, and a quarter of a cup is also equal to three tablespoons. So I'll do three tablespoons of my sweetener. Now, here's the trick. You're going to do um, lemon juice. 
you're going to start with four teaspoons. You're going to start with four teaspoons. And here's why, because you get to decide how thin or how thick you want your glaze on your cookies. If you want it super, super, just like a, like a glaze, then put in six or more teaspoons of lemon juice. If you want it more like a frosting, put in only three teaspoons. So we'll just take a look at that. So I'm gonna start with four. One, two, three, four. And then we'll just see if this is the right consistency for my cookies. Um, you can dip your cookies or you can drizzle just with a spoon. Um, you can try and get fancy and put all of this into um, a Ziploc bag if you want. So I did four teaspoons and quite frankly, I think this is a good texture for, um, for drizzling on my cookies. And quite frankly, if this was too thin and I wanted it to be thicker, I would do one of two things. First, I would put it in the fridge to see if the coconut oil seized up a little bit and made it a little bit thicker. And the second thing that I would do is I would um, maybe just add a little bit more of the of the, the powdered sweetener so that it um, got just a little bit thicker. So this is our frosting. I'm not gonna be able to put that on tonight because our cookies are too hot, but, because I'm a giving person, I'm gonna show you. Um, I have been on a little bit of a, a craze. I made some of these yesterday and the day before, um, but this is what our lemon drop cookies look like. And I'm just gonna keep these in the freezer um, for anybody that would like a little sweet treat. Um, and you know, I'll probably send them to my office tomorrow. It's always nice for, you know, you know, at the office, they're always sugar pushers. They're always pushing the bagels and the muffins and the pizza. So it's nice to have something that's available that you can eat that isn't going to throw you out of whack and you don't feel like you're depriving yourself. And I wouldn't necessarily eat these every day, but it's just nice to, have something so that you don't feel like you're so different from everybody else or whatever. If there's anything that you can do to sort of bridge that awkwardness, this would be something that I would suggest. Um, go for a walk. That's a nice one too. I'm also trying to get rid of all the sweets in my house because I mentioned that the quitsugarsummit.com is coming. It is not a challenge. It is not like you know, a boot camp or anything like that. It is just an online seminar. It goes from March 2nd to March 8th. Um, I'll have more information about the Kick Sugar Summit. Uh, I'm sorry, Quit Sugar Summit. Um, I'm a panelist on it, and um, there's a lot of scientific information. There's a lot of really smart doctors talking about why we need to cut the carbs and get the sugar out of our life. And um, it's just a lot of really great information to watch and you can watch it on your own time. Um, so Matt, it's totally free from March 2nd to March 8th. And I'll tell, I'll tell you more about it later, but starting very soon, I'm going to have not, not even any of this stuff in my, in my house for maybe like about a month or so. So anyways, those are my lemon drop cookies. Let's take a look at my, I should have had my, ladle already for you guys but let's take a look at our beef soup this is so exciting um everybody's coming home for dinner or they should be home very soon but let's just take a look because oh i'm getting a steam bath isn't that nice our soup looks so beautiful and our um zucchini is getting nice and soft i think it might be too hot for me to take a bite but actually, I'm, I'm going to leave it in here because it is too hot for me to, to take a whole thing. But I tell you what I am going to do. I'm going to taste for seasoning. Let's taste for seasoning. I don't think it'll need any. Oh, dinner is served. Okay, you guys. We started 45 minutes ago. We have a jumbo pot of soup. We've got some gorgeous muffins. 
Look at these muffins. Look at our muffins. Let me just open one of these up for you. Oh, so delicious. Ah! All of my recipes are on the website, thekellykitchen.com. Kelly with an I-E, thekellykitchen.com. All of my social is The Kelly Kitchen. And these recipes happen to be all on my website. I was very organized this week. So my lemon drop cookie recipe is on the website, the beef vegetable soup and the cheddar muffins, along with a whole lot of other really fun, great recipes. If you have any recipes that you want to ketoize or pull out the carbs, let me know and I'll help you with it. I'll do the best that I can. I love getting emails. I answer them all the time. Um, I am going to check on our cookies because I think there are like seven minutes left on our cookies. No, seven seconds left. Oh my God, they're ready. Let's get them. See, I love that sound. That's the sound of deliciousness. Oh, amazing. Wow. I might need to take some new pictures tonight. These are our lemon drop cookies. I'm going to let these fully and completely cool. And then I'm going to drizzle my frosting on them. Um, then the piece de resistance is I'm going to zest of just a little bit more lemon zest right on top because I don't know who was saying it, but, oh, it was uh, Carol. Never too much lemon. Lemon zest, there's never enough. So, um, you guys, we're all done with our Monday night edition of the Kelly Kitchen. I hope you had fun. We talked about health, but of course, we had lots of food. Um, thank you so much for joining. Share your the recipes and like and comment and all those sorts of things because when you do that online, it helps me um, and it helps me do more of this. So um, please feel free to share with any of your friends, any of the Facebook groups. You know, do what you what you can to get the word out that low carb cooking and keto cooking does not have to be difficult. So thank you so much for joining. Um, oh, my apron. This one is, um, I don't know where this one is, but my lemon apron is, I got it dirty, so I couldn't wear my lemon, ap my lemon apron. But um, anyways, I think this was just on Amazon. I don't know. Maybe my mom got it for me. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you next week. Same time, same place. Bye. Bye and bye. Yes, we're going to say bye-bye.